What's up, YouTube? G-Man coming at you. Boy, I have really had some spiritual warfare uh, making this video. All kinds of all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, dealing with my job and <clears throat> you know, uh, it takes time to make these videos. And, you know, dealing with my old sin nature and confession of sin and, and all that. And uh, the Holy Spirit, he just, keeps, he just keeps nudging me. And he keeps telling me, just go ahead and make it, you know, and let him take care of the rest. So, here I am. I'm making it. It is... 117 a.m. Those numbers are big. 0117. So, uh, here I am and I'm making it. <sighs> okay, so, um, last time I shared a little bit about whether the Bible was a trustworthy book. Can the Bible be trusted? And uh, this is going to be part two. For that, and I am going to get into a little bit about my my story um, of why I why I uh, can trust the Bible, why I trust the Bible. Uh, basically, um, it all started out. It, it was my mom and dad. They raised me to believe the Bible and uh, to read it, to pray. You know. Um, that all started out with my mom and my dad, and uh, they went to church on a regular basis, and so, you know, that that was how I was, all the way up until I was 19, whenever I experienced my first true, major, actual test that really almost derailed me. I almost became an atheist in my first year of college. You remember that? Uh, slide I put out that says 75% of kids lose their... It says 75% of all children raised in Christian homes who attended public schools will reject the Christian faith by their first year of college. That's from Carol Matriciano's Carol Matriciana's uh, documentary, Let My Children Go. Carol Matriciana, unfortunately, she passed away a while back. It's been, it's been a few years now. Um, so she isn't, a rat, she isn't with us anymore. But uh, I was in my first year of college, and... Um, I was attending a charismatic church, and that did not help in the least little bit. Um, so, my history, it was in my history class, whenever, it was in my history class, whenever my first real challenge to my faith came to me, and my professor, he said, he got in front of the class and he said that he was going to teach both creation and evolution because there was nothing against the law, against the rules. There is nothing against the rules for creating, teaching creation or evolution uh, against the law or the rules. Um, so he said he was going to teach it. And he said that in all of his days... He is not aware of any scientific evidence that backs up scripture, that backs up the Bible. So, uh, whenever he said that, that blew my mind that the Bible and science could not coexist. It was the first time I had even ever really thought about it. 
I had always learned, even from when I was a little kid, that, you know, I, I learned about evolution, and they warned me about evolution, and how it works, and that sort of thing, and I had a, and I had a really, really, really basic understanding of it, compared to what I know now, and, uh, I just thought that, um, you know, I never thought that I would come up against anything like this, I would never thought anybody would say anything like that, you know, uh, and he said, there's all sorts of, there's a mountain of scientific evidence to back up the evolution theory, but there's zero scientific evidence to back up creation. So, that really shook my faith, you know. Nobody, let's see, nobody had the answers, okay, and that really shook my faith, and I started looking for answers at that point, you know. And I turned to my pastor at my church, I turned to my parents, I turned to everyone I knew, and nobody had any answers. Nobody knew any of the answers to these questions. So anyways, uh, I was really, really um, having a problem. And I, was, I was fixing to hang it up, and I was fixing to say, if there's no scientific evidence to support Genesis, then there's no way I'm going to take a stand for it. Because science has to support Genesis. That's just it. If it doesn't support Genesis, then I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna, you know, risk, you know, it's like, it's like I was avoiding going out and partying with people in my first year of college. My second year of college, I was avoiding it. My third year of college, you know, I was, it was like, I was trying to be the best Christian that I could be. And all of a sudden I found out that it might all be just a waste of time. And that's what my teacher was telling me. Because there's zero evidence to back it up. So, uh, that's, at that time, uh, a sad thing happened. My great aunt, uh, she died. My dad's aunt. And we were living in Mississippi at the time, me and my dad, my mom, my sister, we were living in Mississippi, and so, at this point, I went back to Texas, and I visited my old church, and my old church, uh, which was, uh, went back to Berean Memorial Church, and my old church was, uh, Berean Memorial Church, as you can see pictured here, it's a, it's a giant gym, it's a gym, it's a gymnasium on the inside, and uh, it's a it's a pretty funny thing. To uh, I'll tell you a story real quick about a kid who used to attend my church because he had never went to another church, and he said he asked his mom when one day whenever he visited another church, you know, uh, because. We went to, we had service inside of our gym, a, a gymnasium. No other church does that. He said, well, how do they play basketball at the other church? <laughs> and uh, that was always a cute little thing that I heard from one of the mothers at my church. So, um... Anyways, that there's my church right there. There's a picture of my outside of my church right there, and uh, my church consists of two or three different buildings. So that's the gymnasium. That's the one where we have church at the most often. Okay, and uh, we have a Berean Media Ministry. Okay, and and uh, you know I was I visited my old church. I was able to go back and visit uh, the pastor. I talked with him. He answered some of my questions about salvation and and how we can be sure that we're going to go to heaven. And at that time, that was all I needed. 
and I went back home with the Berean Media Ministry. Gonna look at this real quick. This is a video that I made whenever I was a kid. Or, not whenever I was a kid, but whenever I was uh, in my first, well, my fourth year of college. I went to a total of seven and a half years of college. Um, and in my fourth year of college, I made this video uh, for my documentary film class. Or no, this was my introduction to film class. So, anyways, it's... Uh, it's a video all about my church. You know, um... This is Pastor Leon Atkins, pastor of the Berean Memorial Church in Irving, Texas. He is successor to the late Dr. John Danish, who pastored the church for over 50 years. This church operates a side <coughs> ministry known as the Berean Recorded Media Ministry, which has been running since the mid-70s. Let me tell you this about Dr. Danish. He would take one subject or one book of the Bible and go completely through it in a systematic manner just as though he were teaching a class of seminary students. In the early 70s, some of the students who had gone off to college began to ask for cassette tapes of the sermons that they had missed. So that was how the uh, tape ministry, what we now call the recorded media ministry, began. This is the Berean Recorded Media Ministry catalog. It has a list of literally hundreds of sermons that have been recorded over the last 35 plus years. Each sermon averages nearly 50 minutes in length. So what we have here is a source of information that is practically unquenchable. All these recordings literally add up to hundreds of hours. And that does not even include the vast amount of research and time that went into bringing all this information into one place. The most amazing thing about this ministry is that there are no clients, no subscribers, and no fees. Berean does not charge for the recorded media or the shipping. The Berean Recorded Media Ministry only operates on donations. In some cases, as many as 50 hours worth of Bible teaching. In fact, it took a total of 39 MP3s to contain the entire brand record. These and MP3s. These are our computers. Anyways, that's just detailing some of the basics. Over the world who order our recorded material. And so it is our pleasure to be able to uh, get into people's hands. Yeah, he's just saying right there that we send the materials, the media ministry, to out to all over the world. Um... Yeah, I'll include the link to this video uh, down in the description section. Um, so, that was something that I made whenever I was a kid. And uh, had fun making it. So, yeah. Let's see here. Um, what's next? So, I got my hands on that Burritum media ministry and that uh, renewed my faith in the Bible and, and it kept me strong. It gave me something to really uh, bite into, you know, uh, build my spiritual maturity structure and we'll be talking more about that uh, later on. <clears throat> and uh, it, it just it just held me firm in, the, in God's Word. So let's see here. We have 14 minutes. Ah, oh, wow. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I've been going on for 14 minutes now. So, anyways, let me finish the story up. Um, and then two years later, God provided me with Kent Hovind's seminar, and this really supercharged me. Okay, it prepared me for my third. It prepared me for anthropology class in my third year of college. And uh, Ken Hovind's seminar is, let's see here, anyways, Ken Hovind's seminar is with Creation Science Evangelism. He's the one that came up with this right here, 
the longevity chart from Adam to Joseph, and this comes from his ministry, the timeline evolution, timeline of creation, creation says the earth is 6,000 years old, evolution says that the big bang happened approximately 20 billion years ago, um, so Ken Hovind's uh, creation science ministry really supercharged uh, what I was doing. So, see it here. So that prepared me for this. The teacher, he got in front of the class and he held a skull from a Neanderthal or from a I don't know, some Australopithecine or Australopithecus. I don't know what kind of skull it was, but he held a skull and he said, everybody, this is what we came from. This is one of our ancestors. Now, if I hadn't have found Krent Hovind's seminar and come across it, then I would have been up the creek without a paddle. I would have been completely unprepared for this. That's it. That's Arnold Schwarzenegger from the movie Last Action Hero. I always love that scene. But anyways, um, yeah, whenever the teacher did that, boy, that would have sealed the deal for me. I would have been like, they got skulls, man. We know, we know where we came from because of the skulls. But the truth is, a bone in the ground, a, a skull, it doesn't prove anything. First off, you can't prove that if you find an animal in the ground, you can't prove that that animal, that particular animal, had any kids. That animal might be the only one that looks different. It could have been a deformity. You can't prove that it had any kids. You can't prove that the animal died where you found it. That's just two things that are, that would just, that just completely blows the lid off of, you know, our ancestors and skulls being found in the dirt and bones being, you know, fossils being found in the dirt and them saying we evolved from these creatures. It's, it's all baloney. All baloney. And the serpent said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The serpent wanted to put doubt into Eve's mind. Whenever they hold up that skull, whenever my teacher got in front of that history class and said, There's no scientific evidence for creation. But there's a mountain of evidence for evolution. They were trying to put doubt in my mind. They're trying to put doubt in everyone's mind. They want us to doubt God's word. Just like the serpent said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the way he worded that, with specifically chosen words to get Eve to doubt even more. We'll get into that later. So, anyways, this video is already running extremely long. Uh, it doesn't seem like I'm. these videos are ever going to be short, I wonder. I don't know if they will or not. So, I've got a lot to say. So anyways, uh, G-Man out.